everybody we are back technical te technical difficulties aside we got through it it's here we're done and we are joined by martin pak and ozzy from maya san jose based hardcore band gentlemen how are y'all doing today great pretty man. good man beautiful good. i'm Fantastic. excited to be on this yeah, we're, we are excited to have you because I think that it's going to be an, uh, an amazing conversation because while we were talking in the green room, we were just, uh, you know, just chatting about music, about, uh, you know, people using their heritage in uh, in music and stuff like that um, and doing a different bands. And then as we were talking about Metalachi, y'all said that y'all started as a mariachi band, but then somehow started playing metal. So I have to know how that accidentally happened. Well, not really play mariachi, but uh, the influence is like guitar you know uh, me in elementary and middle school i play the trumpet so i was trying to go that route too mm -hmm. big influence in me and my brother we're actually uh, he's my oldest brother and he ended up playing the the trombone also in uh, elementary and middle school so we went from that to guitar and bass um and then let the hair grow and, and then we just you know we, we were rocking out to Jimi hendrix pink floyd um metallica nirvana and we ended up crossing and, you know, really with the intent of just learning how to play instruments, we ended up really with Maya and this kind of infusion of punk metal and hardcore. Yeah. Uh, amazing I, stuff. No, no, go, go ahead. Go ahead, Martin. I did start playing, like, early on, I started playing, like, more like uh, cumbia and salsa and more like regional Mexican music. Mm. Um, it's basically all we listen to at the house. So, like, when I finally got a chance to play the first chance I got to play with a band, they were playing that style of music. So I was like, fuck it. I'd rather play this than nothing, you know? Yeah, and when I met energy Paco in it. Yeah, when I met Paco and Ozzy, uh, Paco and I met in uh, summer school. And uh, I wasn't, it like, I used to think, like, I wasn't really into rock, you know? I used to not think that it was for us, you know? Well, mind and you, like, he, he was, he, I got, as we introduced ourselves, he was more influenced by hip-hop and um, rap, soul, R&B. Mm. So the the i think we sat there and just kind of ran through some records and marin was definitely more intrigued by the metal and the punk i actually i found a, a allison chain unplugged uh mtv record just laying around and i told him like yo why Check the this out. why the fuck is this on the floor <laughs> i was like it's so good because that record is Sorry, so good man. Hey, no disrespect to Alice in Chains fans and all that. You know, don't come after me and shit. I just didn't. I wasn't hip. You know what I'm saying? Like a boy of mine just hooked me up with a bunch of CDs and it was in that CD or in that stack. And I was like, I don't you know, like I put it on and I was like, I don't know what this is, bro. Like I just kind of put it to the side, you know, but I did yeah. catch him. I caught him one time with Deftones here in San Jose and like. Uh, um, hold on, though. Hold on. Mastodon opened that oh, show. Mastodon played. And then Deftones and then Alice in Chains at the end. I was going to leave right before Alice in Chains because I wanted to see Master on Deftones. And my boy's like, just stay for one song. And if you don't like it, you can leave, right? And they played one song and I didn't move for like three hours. I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, it was nuts. I, I love that. I love that journey. And so, like, I, I I'm curious about that, right? Cause so you uh, talked about your, your, and that's a question that I had actually. I was, I was curious on how like y'all were introduced to, uh, you know, metal hardcore, just like extreme music in general. So you uh, start started that journey, and then I, I guess now, uh, when did that kind of switch? lip for y'all when you were like okay you know what this is something that we can do and this is something that we want to do and this is what we're going to put our energy into uh and we're going to be be a hardcore band and like play together uh wh what what was that journey like and uh like how did that all form i mean marn and i really kind of kicked it out kicked like kicked it real nice uh you know high school i think my sophomore year we had met into uh it was a summer school. And we both sucked at school. Yeah, we weren't the greatest. But our That's teacher, at the, at the teacher at the time, he was in a death metal, death death metal. Um, no, actually, no, because he was he was a really mayhem, a big mayhem fan. So he was into black metal, and he saw me walk up into uh, one day with a misfit shirt, and he's like, "Hey, can you stay after class?" I was like, oh, the fuck. tension. Oh, shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, weirdly enough, Martin 
was like, y'all want to stay too. I was like, the <laughs> they didn't even invite my ass, dude. Like, I just <laughs> knew that they were going to play, like, they were going to talk about music. And I was just like, I was waiting to music, you know? And then I was like, fuck, I'm just going to stay and see what happens. He hands me a Mayhem CD, and I'm like, all right, this motherfucker is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so I Do showed Martin the one. Ra- <sighs> it wasn't the one with the bloody, bloody brain. Mm-hmm. Um, it had a blue and black okay. cover. I, can't, I, I can never remember how to pronounce that album, but I know exactly which one you're talking about. So he hands me this record, and he's like, go home. I was go like, home, all right. <laughs> Hell yeah. Me and Mar <laughs> listened to it. Me and Mar listened to it. Mar was like, yo, I don't want to hear this. What is this? I'm going to have nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> so weirdly enough, it's Mayhem and Alice in Chains that really were like, yo, Let's start playing some punk music, some see what comes out. Um, along the way, you know, we got into production. Me and Ozzy had been playing you know, some music for a long time. Um, I think Martin, what production company were you working for, Karna? We started, like, getting involved with the local scene out here, and there was a spot, like a popular spot in San Jose called The Cave. And um, we just started, uh, no one, like, when we first started, nobody was booking us, like every band. So we're like, fuck it, let's do, let's do our own show. So we started booking like our own lo- shows locally, mm. and um, and from there started bringing like eventually people that were on tour and I ever started hitting us up. So the cave was born and it became like a really dope like local spot for up and coming bands and also like national touring bands started coming through. So mind you, SF had just closed their the major band. venue of national acts. Like we got to see. As I lay dying, every time I die, a lot of dying. A lot of the Lamb of God. We saw a uh, bleeding through um, the Misfits. It was just such a small venue. Like, nobody and... would come to San Jose. Like everybody would just go straight to San Francisco if you wanted to do shows, you know. But it's been yeah. like that for a long time because San Francisco has a long ass history of just dopeness, you know. Sure. So we're like, let's just put something together. The pound just closed, and just bring everybody here to. San Jose. I mean, we need a. We have a huge punk and metal community, but you know, we, we were here playing backyard shows. We're playing, you know, warehouses. We're playing uh, inside houses. You know, we just, you know, punk, we could. punk mentality just kind of been, you know, the DIY. Yeah, it's and that's exactly what I was going to say. It's just like, all right, cool. We need a place for this community to thrive and gather. So let's fucking do it ourselves. Like, love it. Pretty like, much. I absolutely love that. Well, it was either that or you know, you got gang violence. You know, you have racism in a lot of these crazy areas in the world. But, mm-hmm. you know, we, we were looking for a community of kids just to play music. And, you know, we were lucky enough to to have really great people around us. And, you know, we were just making noise. We don't know what the hell, you know, if it made sense or not. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, Cor, did you want to jump in real quick? Before oh, yeah, I definitely. Since everything? we're talking about influences and, I mean, you guys have a lot of really cool influences and a a lot of cool ways you've brought metal into your lives um but one thing we were talking about a little bit before you came onto the show in the green room and that has been brought up in some of your other interviews is bringing in like your cultural influences and your heritage into the music and i wanted to hear a little bit more about that and if there are any plans to bring in like you said you know mariachi metal (laughs) just is, are there more plans to bring in those more cultural sounds, the instruments, anything like that that's from, you know, your guys' heritage? Um, Definitely. I feel yeah. like it, flo- it flows naturally uh, through us. Um, being, you know, being from Mexican descent, most of us being from uh, Mexican descent, um, it, it, it kind of allows us to interpret hardcore and metal through a different set of lenses, you know? And... Mm-hmm. It's really helped us in a way carve a sound that is unique to us. And as we continue to to press more into it, as we did with this last record, Despierta, um, from the, the cover of the album to um, some of the lyrics and the content of the album, it's all through the perspective of first generation being born here in the U.S. and the things that we've experienced uh, up until now. So... With the response that we've gotten, it's given us a lot more. It's encouraged us to keep pushing deeper into that and to really not um, not to let our roots be more at the forefront of what we do as opposed to just highlighting it here and there. You know, we really like 
want to show how proud we are. And I think where the world is at now and where hardcore and metal is at now, where it's more inclusive and there's a little bit more of an open mind to things like that, it's the perfect space for us to continue to, to let that um, show more and more through what we're creating. Um, I want to chime in right quick. Do you want to say something? Uh, you know, pre-pandemic, we were already writing some Latin stuff. Um, so metal wasn't even on the radar. The pandemic hit and we just kind of, you know, I've, I've written a lot of records before, but this one was definitely like an emotional one because, you know, we've always been an angry, you know, angry punk bands or, mm-hmm. you know, always protesting some type of message. Mm-hmm. I think this record, we really did a lot of, you know, feelings and emotions towards one, the guitar tone to the way the drum sound because Martin's so hip hop influence. Um, and I think, you know, on the bass, my brother really loves like the rockabilly, psychedelic, old school. So, you know, there's definitely a lot of genres that I think we, we bring into this. It's just we never had a setting to be able to do it in. And I think like Martin is a very, I mean, he went off into hip hop. So he has some great records under his name. You know, me and my brother have always been tied into instruments. And Fred and, and, and JT, man, as guitar players, I don't think, like, you know, we've ever come across some of the most talented, talented players. you know, not not just because they, they play with Miles, but because, we, you know, things They've like, always been around. Yeah, they've yeah. been around us. So there are numerous influences, bands around here, you know. So I think this next record is really going to be something we're, we're looking forward for sure. And, try to tie in all those influences like she had said mm-hmm. uh amazing shit and i, I want to shout out uh it looks like we have a, another uh another one of your bandmates in the green room right now friend can you hear us Hell yeah. Frederico. yes i can oh it's jt uh, let me put you in- yeah, uh, so JT, let me get you in here. It's going to look a little bit jacked on screen because we're just doing this while the, the plane is in the air, but let's get you in here so you can say hi to the people and the people can say hi to you. Uh, we're let running me see with us. it like a child with scissors, yeah, like I go. always hey. say. We got you. Here. What is up, JT? How's it going, my friend? It's going good. I just got off work. I'm still in the parking lot, but I got here as soon as I could. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Well, we are happy to Thanks have you. Thanks for having us. Yeah, for absolutely, having us. dude. It's yeah. fucking awesome. No can problem. I cuss? Yeah, of course you can fucking cuss. Oh, word, 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 word. We don't give a shit. <laughs> Hell yeah. We're hunting. Can we smoke? <laughs> we don't care. The captain has turned off the uh, no smoking signal, so you guys Let's are go. fucking good. Uh, yeah, also, uh, amazing Gate Creeper hoodie right there. Like, fucking. Oh, thank like, you. Hell yeah, dude. Um, thank you. So I wanted to, and then like JT, I'm sure that you have some thoughts on this and everything like that as well, because, um, you know, I think one of the things that like Martin, you were talking about, Nazi, you were talking about as well, as far as like, um, you know, uh, you know, music with a message, like hardcore always seems like that it, it's coming from the heart, right? You're singing about things that are either like frustrating to you or like inequalities, things like that. And, uh, you know, I think that you guys doing what you're doing with, uh, you know, your cultural heritage or with like uh, Latin flavors or roots or anything like that provides a um, more representation that maybe music doesn't necessarily have right now. Is that something that you guys kind of see as well? Yeah, for sure. For, uh, for me, coming from uh, being black, uh, there's not a, I feel like there's not enough black people in hardcore um, <laughs> my whole life. Uh, it's kind of seemed like there's there's some there's definitely like it's growing for sure I've seen over like the years but um, for a long time just people of color and black people specifically just hasn't been like I don't know it hasn't been present um, he so had to learn like, Spanish yeah I know I need to learn Spanish we're going to Mexico so <laughs> no no what I'm trying to say is like you know, there was more Latinos in the in the community at the time, so you had to learn yeah, Spanish. Yeah, for sure. Mm. Especially coming from San Jose, like it was it was tight having like uh, definitely having like more people of color in hardcore. But mm-hmm. as a black person, I wish there was more black people in hardcore. That's true. We would get uh, you know, and and he brings a good point because we would tour the Southwest and we were getting pulled over by immigration. Or by PD. Mm-hmm. As soon as I put, you know, one of the guys, unfortunately, he would, you know, he 
we use them as non bait to drive. Hey, nobody's pulling us over. And I'm like, damn. So you know, yeah. he traveling when we did, it was a hard time. But you don't you don't know these things at the moment. You know, you're just trying to get to the next venue and make a little bit of money to get to the next town. You know, we toured for a long time. You know, uh, and really seeing how diverse the Bay Area um, hardcore nice. metal scene is is as you know, we, you don't know what you have at home until it's gone. Mm -hmm. mm. John, you look like you have follow up face, so I'm trying I not do. to interrupt. I, 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 was, I was just doing the yeah. Zoom silence, you know, to make sure that I wasn't cutting anybody off because I, I, I have a problem with that sometimes. <laughs> no, you're good, you're it's good. Cool, man. Right, no, so I was curious. So, like, I, I had a follow up question to that just in general, and it's like you kind of addressed it a little bit, but um, you know. Uh, there is a, you know, prevailing notion that, you know, like metal is for everybody, right? Like anybody who wants to come in can do this, which, you know, it's not always the case, right? It, 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 all these music have, have problems just like society at large does. I'm curious, and there might not be a right answer to this, but I always like to ask because this is something that I'm very strong, like I have very strong opinions about, but like, how do you think, and like whether it's hardcore metal, extreme music in general, but like, how do you think that we as a group, like all of us, right? Because we each have our little parts in it, right? You guys play the music. Music, we try and promote the music and get everybody out there and everything like that. Like, how do we, you know, facilitate like welcoming experiences for everybody and inclusiveness and all that? Like, is I know there's no one way to do that, but in your minds, like, what do you think is the most important thing to get anybody, regardless of color, race, uh, you know, gender, anything like that? How do we make an inclusive environment for this music that we love so much? Hey, um, good and, question. It is a good question. I think that I think now we are I think we're seeing that happen now. Like as we as we see like society and the world starting to become more woke, as the young people like to say, you know, um, you're starting to see that trickle into the arts and into the music community and getting people like yourselves, like both of you guys here um, who are who are uh, expanding that, you know, who are reaching out to other bands who look different, who sound different. Um, of course, there needs to be a standard, in my opinion, of the quality being there so that the message doesn't get lost. You know, sometimes it may not be the right time for, for a band or an artist that is on the come up with the right message. It might, you know, the, the music might not be there all the way yet and the music and the message gets lost in that sometimes, you know? But I think it's, it takes all of us to hold ourselves to a certain standard and keep pushing that forward so that the next generations uh, won't have to face the same obstacles and can, can continue to diversify the scene and continue to create a community that's all inclusive. I also feel like it's on us too, just being, uh, just being more out, outspoken, outgoing, um, and like really, like welcoming, doing it ourselves, you yeah, know what I mean? Welcoming, welcoming the people of, of color and like, like showing it, just being like, I guess it's, it's, I, I don't know why I'm stuttering, but, uh, I guess it's I like, have a lot uh, of things on your mind. Yeah. I guess it's our job to, to show people that it is an inclusive thing. It is an inclusive space. I also do believe that uh hardcore is for everyone uh but it's not for for anyone if that makes any sense i think i'm picking up yeah definitely picking up what you're throwing down and that's something that i mean i see a lot of bands doing exactly what you're saying and it's such a powerful thing that they're they're a lot more open with their fans than they ever were in the past i mean i've I just sat there and BS'd with more bands during sh like after their show or after their set is over at a show, they'll be out walking around in the audience. And I didn't see that, you know, 10 years ago, but now I see it and it is creating that environment where it's, you know, yeah. you guys are joining the community, but you're bringing all of your friends and all of these other people with you too. And it's such a powerful thing. Right. <laughs> Yeah, because I, because I, oh, my personal, uh, like my personal uh, Instagram, I post videos of other shows, mm -hmm. and some really good close friends message me saying, "Hey, I want to go to your next show, but I don't know what to do or how to come in or what should I wear." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
They always ask, just, well, what should I wear? Should I just wear all black? And I'm like, dude, just be yourself. Just wear whatever you want to wear. I do, do I have to wear like a Nirvana shirt? I'm like, no. So I, I, I literally chime saw in, a like, guy. You know, um, oh, I was just going to say, I literally saw Being able to show. listen to every. No, I'll, I'll let you go. Sorry, go for it. I was going to say, wear what you want. I literally saw a guy at the last show I went to wearing ducky pajamas. Uh, nice. Yes. So continue. <laughs> nice. <laughs> And you know, and it's 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 cool because you know we get to see people from all walks of life, and you know you sometimes don't know what you're doing or how you're going to come across these people until you ask them. Because what all we do is assume, or we do, we judge, or we you know the book by the cover. So if we sit there and actually take the time, not saying that it's our jobs, but some people have platforms that can definitely get a cool message and a positive one across. I mean, there's violence everywhere. You know, there's fucking pornography everywhere. There's, you know, whatever you want, it's there. But, you know, if somebody come across your page and they're like, well, wait, shit, I haven't seen this or heard this or even seen someone that looks like me do this before. I mean, just one person it takes to for them to be like, yo, I'm inspired. And I think that's really what, you know, the met, well, at least for me, it's like as long as we inspire someone and that one person and they come out, hey, you got somebody to break out of the shell and, and you know. See that not everything's fucking BS. Even though Despierta is really a really dark record, but mm. you know, you look back into the pandemic and see how it was a dark place for I think a lot of the world. You know, so if you, people can embody that, you can really hear what in that time was going on. So you know, that's that's. I think that question really is: Hey, we got to hear each other out. We can't just judge by somebody. Telling us, oh, I don't like this. We're like, oh, well, fuck you. But like, no, no, no. We, you know, we have to hear each other out. Mm -hmm. I know people aren't going to be happy with everyone's opinion, but you know, who's to say? Like, you know, I can't shut him out listening to to. I be like, yo, I want to listen to Tyler's Change. Nah, I want to listen to the to the Stray Cats. And we would give each other time. You know, hey, you play your shit and I'll play mine. And we're like, yo, that shit's such a tight. You know. Mm -hmm. So I've always said, for me, with music, if I don't appreciate it. This time around, I always come back to it years later because maybe you can learn from it, you know? Yeah, very well said. I have a similar philosophy where I will press play on anything once just mm -hmm. to give it a shot, you know, because you never know. You never know what's going to be inside that track. Um, so you you mentioned uh, Despierta and uh, the dark uh, lyrical themes on it. Uh, when I was listening to it and reading lyrics and everything, it also seemed like it might be... Um, uh, cathartic as well, which you know I, I know a lot of this music is to just kind of get whatever it is you're 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 thinking out. Uh, and in that vein, I wanted to ask y'all because I uh, uh, y'all came across my radar uh, as I'm sure that you did a, with a lot of people with the uh, the show that you played with Drain and Gulch and everybody in the fucking parking oh, yes. lot back in the summer. Because I wanted oh, to yes. ask you about that because this was still in a time where we didn't know what what was going on right this is right before the delta surge. Yeah. like and you see like thousands of people in a parking lot just fucking like flipping over each other and like doing all this shit like i'm just curious like what that experience was like for y'all like a did had y'all played anything beforehand and b just like what when you finally got on that stage surrounded by thousands of people what what was going through your minds as we lost uh martin oh it looks like he's, got, ah, he's coming back, back. Oh, sorry. No, guys. it's all right. We're, you're back. You're I'm back. back. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no? Well, what was Maya was hasn't was wasn't playing too? shows in a long time. Nine years, probably nine years or mm -hmm. something like that. And we we're just focusing on writing the record. And finally, we got asked to play that RBS, and we released the the address within two hours. So I wasn't, I didn't have high hopes for it. I'm like, oh, probably like a good fifty people are going to show up especially because of the whole positive. COVID thing. You know, I don't know if everyone was still scared. It's because, but uh, I finally pulled up and man, there was just a sea of people. And I, that's when I think I started feeling nervous <laughs> and, you know, all the butterflies started coming in again, but it was, RBS was dope. It was a good experience for us. Yeah. I kind of, uh, I kind of, I guess I didn't expect over 2,000, but, like, I knew that a lot of people were going to be there. Wait, no, no, hold on. We don't know the exact number. Sorry. That's not what I heard. 
anyways, um, <laughs> there's definitely over two thousand, like close to three thousand people. people there. Um, and I knew that this was gonna, like I knew it was going to be special. It was in San Jose. Um, San Jose doesn't have very many all ages type venues or venues in general for that matter anymore. Um, Gulch, Drain, Tsunami, Zabalba, Scal, like, like I knew, and especially after the pandemic when shows hadn't really been happening, um, like some here or there. uh, And it just was, it was honestly so like surreal to see that many people in the parking lot, especially like Ozzy said, that I think the address got announced like two or three hours before the show. And within, it seems like within minutes of that happening, there was already like hundreds of people there. Um, thinking back on it, it was kind of a blur just because of how much like was going on and how many like friends were there and and just a bunch of stuff. But watching the videos, um, I have a couple of pictures from it that I, like I say that when I look at them, it's kind of like mind blowing. Like, Yo, I, I, I got to play this, which is, fucking insane uh, and no i have never played anything like that before prior to that so fuck yeah real fuck yeah. Shit, uh, you know what i mean real base yeah. shit you know yeah dude saying? yeah like, no I, I, yeah, that's I fucking dude. awesome like, I, I love i love that shit they don't say hardcore until i die you know what i'm saying like <laughs> yeah like before can you guys hear me okay yeah 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 before like yeah. it wasn't like that for san jose you know like shout out honestly like a lot of it i feel is at least from my perspective like i'm like hella grateful that that the new wave of bands like embraced this embraced us the way they do and allowed us to be a part of that moment because it was a long time coming for san jose like before san jose was not looked at um, in the regard that it's looked at now, like now, like San Jose, San Jose hardcore as a whole and bands coming out of the San Jose area um, are held in the regard of bands that were coming out of L.A., bands that are coming out of New York, like where people consider meccas of hardcore, you know, and mm-hmm. I think RBS really sent a statement that was felt like worldwide that San Jose has has uh, something to say and San Jose is for real, you know, so it meant a lot. It meant a lot for sure. Like we didn't feel like being at the epicenter of the show, like I didn't really get to process the emotion of it until like days after I feel. Mm. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, well, I'm so happy that you guys were able to have that like experience, the especially uh, after uh, the shit that we have been through over the past like 18 months and everything like that. Um, Corey, I have one more question right. for them uh, other than, you know, your question. Uh, do you have anything else that you want to, that you want to, you can ask your question first because we all know that mine is like the most awesome question. So yes, of course. Can... <laughs> uh, uh, the uh, yeah. the only thing that I have left is uh, so uh, Despierta came out in July. Uh, it's been out there. Uh, you guys have said that you are uh, working on new music now. Um, what uh, what do you want people to take away from your music, um, and what do y'all have planned going forward? I think most. Uh, the guys could chime in too. Um, I think. I think. Oh, go ahead, Puck. Um. So first of all, we're you know thank you guys for allowing us to do this. You know, we're not. This is not something we're used to being streamed live. We usually mm-hmm. just kind of show up and play. So yeah. typing into our heads is kind of tight, you know. And, and thank you again, both of you guys, for your time. Um, the but first, we're con- we're headed con- to Mexico. Um, at the end of the month, we're going to, I think we might be on just a little bit of a delay here. Uh, Um, we're headed to Mexico and (laughs) uh, we're headed to Mexico with, uh, with Salvaje and and Hollow at night, got a bunch of days out there. Um, and then we we have this charity that we're donating a lot of the funds that have come through GoFundMe. We are almost to our, to our, uh, to our goal. That was a thousand dollars to donate to this foundation that helps kids stay out of the streets in Guadalajara. Um, and we get to spend day of the dead in, in Monterrey, which is, you know, something really huge, uh, culturally in, in Mexico. They, they kind of praise their ancestors and give thanks to them and remember them. Um, 
And so we do have an event this weekend, but we don't know if it's going to go through because of the rain. Um, but with the record, I'd say, you know, it's all right to be angry sometimes. You know, not everything's roses and butterflies in, in life. So the cool thing is that we all have an outlet to be able to really put in some of that emotion, whether it's, you know, cadence or a scream or uh, a chant. But having, you know, a community of people sometimes gets you through some, some crazy times in your life, you know. Mm -hmm. So I think community matters the most. And I think RBS was huge on, on a bunch of kids who created a community and made, you know, a crazy event in San Jose happen just out of really just having no place to, to, to go or, you know. At the time where San Jose just had opened up their their doors for everyone to be outside. I think it was the week of the 15th or something like that. And then we, you know, June 19th, we have RBS and it was just, you know, insane. insane. I mean, this we've had Mexico definitely embraced us early on. So we've, you know, we've been going out there and touring for a long time. It's going to be our third time going to Mexico. It's going to be, if that, maybe our fourth. Probably. Yeah. So um, I, I think hopefully that answers your question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Martin, JT, did you guys want to chime in uh, with anything? And I I had to repeat the question. I will. Uh, yeah. Could you? I vaguely remember. No, so I just I just <laughs> I want, want it right. Yeah, I'm curious on what you want people to take out of your music. And uh, actually, that's what it is, because uh, Ozzy was so nice to say what's coming up next. So, uh, Martin, JT, what do you guys want to take away from people who listen to uh, to your music? Just to, just to express yourself, like, be who you are and, and don't give up. Um, that is the first, Despierta is the first piece of music that, um, I was completely in charge of writing all the guitar for, um, which I'm not to pat myself on the back, but I'm I'm really proud of it actually, just because no, I'm never go ahead, done. My boy, you can be proud of it, yeah. I've never yeah, done pat yourself back on the back. back. Yeah, you killed I've that never shit, bro. Done anything like that before, like writing all of the music. I did vocals for most of the, like my career in music, so like mm. writing guitar parts and stuff and like composing songs was definitely a challenge for me. But I didn't give up, and we just kept kept pushing it, and and I feel like all of that was definitely one hundred percent who I am. So um, just express yourself and don't fucking give up, even if it even if it's hard, even if it feels weird, don't fucking give up. So fuck yeah, that's what. Yeah, um, and if you have some lows like JT on the vocals, go do go record it. <laughs> My oh, boy has also, some amazing vocals too. Also, if too. you know how to play an instrument and you got some, and like you got some homies, start a fucking band. Just yeah, start, start a, a fucking band, band. definitely. Do it dude. now. Like, start a band. I I hope that what people take away when they listen to Despierta is like a way to connect with us more and a way to understand to for them to um, understand for us to be able to understand each other more. You know to be able to listen to the music and also read through the lyrics and know that it's coming from a real place and it's coming from uh, a, the the experience of, of someone else who could be your neighbor, it could be your friend, it could be your relative, it could be someone just like you. And, um, and I just hope that those who are relating to it and those who are connecting with it will continue to, um, will continue to, to be a part of our journey and to know that uh, their support is a huge inspiration for us to continue to push ourselves to create better and better music with every record. Fuck yeah. Excellent. Well said, everybody. Amaz amazing shit. Yeah. And uh, before Corey gets into her question, just, yeah, keep doing the shit that you guys are doing, everybody. Because, like, we can we can feel that, that that's coming from a place where you guys are, you know, basically ripping yourselves out to put that out there. So just keep mm -hmm. fucking doing what you're doing. And there we go. That, that's that, that's all I got. That's all I got. That's me being poetic. If you guys need some people to come and like be custodians at Nafes Mexico, you know what I'm saying? Someone to help build the stage or something. We do construction. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, we're down to help build the stage for a short set. You know what I'm saying? Like, let us know, man. We're down. 
You've you've got my IG handle. You, you know you know where to I find got me. you. Yeah, I you got, got you. Me. My my first concert actually that I went with Paco. He took me was a was a Ausfest here in in in, our, in uh, Mountain View where we're from in our area. And Slipknot played. So like when uh, they told us that we're going to come on here, it was just like a, a full circle moment for us. So we're hella grateful for you guys um, taking the time to have us on here. It really means a lot to us for real. Yeah. I'm a I'm a maggot for sure. <laughs> I like to go home in a body bag. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Fuck yeah, absolutely. I, I love it. I love it. Corey, hit him with your, your big, massive, huge The big, question. massive, important question. What Let's is go. your favorite dinosaur? Oh, shit. <laughs> Velociraptor. If it's not, like, are you in a metal? Sign, uh, a T-Rex. T-Rex. Velociraptor. Uh, Those things were fucking fast and murdered people. Damn. Uh, Max, I don't know if it... Uh, my, I don't know if mine's a dinosaur, but it's called a liger. I don't know if you guys ever heard of that. Not a dinosaur, boy, it's a, tiger. a lion tiger <laughs> mix. <laughs> you no, know what I'm saying? Okay, see, yeah, it's a pun. That's a made. Up, that's a fable. That's a made up fable. Well, until you know, until someone proves me wrong, it's for real. <laughs> they actually the do the exist. The liger is the best dinosaur, apparently. Let's go with that. <laughs> they do exist. Hey, Corinne, don't they exist? Right? There's they do there, right? exist. <laughs> They do exist. I appreciate you standing up for me. I appreciate you there. Yes. Ligers are a male lion and a female tiger. A tigon is a male tiger with a female lion. Oh, Science damn, facts know that. on not best. That's me, cool, baby. Shit. Oh, every day. Fuck yeah. You're like yeah. a Snapple cat. You know it all. I got a question for you. Yeah. Uh, Star Trek or Star Wars? Star oh, Wars. Shit. Star damn. Wars. Sorry, everybody. Star Wars. Hands down. I've never seen a Star Wars movie in my Most life. Definitely. Me either. <laughs> Me either. I'm hurt. That's fine. It's fine. Uh, I, I guess this is where we tell you uh, you're getting kicked oh, out of the band, JT. We're sorry for you. You, you, you hurt John so much, he yeah, left the he stream. Like, Look, he, just, he left me here alone. <laughs> 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 You're no longer alive. I think they pulled the plug. They're like, yo, pull the plug. These fools <laughs> are Star, Star, Star Wars fans. I haven't seen... Whatsoever. I've just never... Yeah. Just never crossed... Came into my life. Oh. I've never seen Star Wars or, or Star Trek or what it's called, but I have seen Spaceballs, though. It's Spaceballs. It's an excellent movie. Yeah, oh, movie. yeah <laughs> fuck yeah. Absolutely. We watched that on my personal stream oh, not too long ago. Okay. We did a drinking game oh, with it. It was fucking great. I don't even Thank know if we're, uh, yeah. We're still live. I don't even live. know if we're live. I don't no, know we are. We are. I got, I got to <laughs> wrap this up. Oh, Thank no. you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you guys so, so much. much. Absolutely, like, bros. It was so good to have you guys on. Yeah. Everybody yeah. listen to Maya. Thank you guys for joining us today. It was an awesome chat with you. You guys have a Thank you for having us. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, there's John again. <laughs> I thought I was back this entire time, but I was just talking to nobody. So I was like, I was like, I was like saying stuff, and I was like, oh, why aren't they responding to me? And it's because we don't like you, John. Yeah, I don't know. Like I, I feel it. Anyways, y'all, hey. thank you so much. Oh, for we can see him. All right. Thank you so right, much. Guys, take care. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Have you're very welcome. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Bye. See you guys. Bye.